So, Mark, did you see that the Las Vegas Lights, they once again did their $5,000 cash drop, which basically is just them flying a helicopter above Cashman Field where they play and dropping thousands of dollars all over the field. And then lucky fans who are chosen ahead of time get to run all over and pick up stuff. I saw one guy who like got $13 in, on Twitter, so I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of confetti too, so I wonder how much of it just blows away and nobody gets it. Um, but uh, yeah, did you see that? It looks pretty cool. So you're saying they just like drop litter in the desert, basically? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like no, it. You know what my thir- first thought was? Do you remember uh, going to like Chuck E. Cheese as a kid and that ticket uh, tornado that you, if it was your birthday party, you get to stand in and you try to grab whatever tickets you can? That's exactly what I thought of. And it sounds awesome. It does sound awesome. I think they had over 200 people that got selected to do it. First time that they did it, the FAA came in and investigated the helicopter pilot because apparently they didn't fly the helicopter safely. They didn't have enough chance to like recover themselves. If they crashed, they would have you know crashed into the crowd below or something. Uh, but apparently they've worked it out. So it's a tradition now. And uh, they got covered. It was on ESPN everywhere else. So uh, once again, that little soccer team from Las Vegas making national headlines. Yeah, I definitely got to go check it out. It seems like they, they do a lot of fun stuff and they try really hard to get make it unique uh, for what it is, like the, the pools on the side of the field, pull your car up type of stuff. Like just, it, it seems really, really cool. So definitely something unique to Vegas and over the top, of course. And I'll, I'll catch free money anytime. Well, 13 bucks is better than no bucks. <laughs> exactly. All right, Mark, uh, this wasn't talked about as much this last week, but something big happened in Las Vegas. The Tropicana, pretty much the most historic property on the Strip. I know Flamingo's older, uh, but there's no original buildings there. Tropicana still has some of its original bungalows and stuff like that. But it has officially been sold to Bally's Corporation. That sale is now complete, which means a few things. Uh, First off, uh, that the name Tropicana is probably a thing of the past. Uh, Bally's is going to keep the name for a couple of years, but let's start there. You don't have the sentimental history with Tropicana. There's a I huge video tears. I did on the show <laughs> yeah, on the, on the channel. If you want to see a whole tour of the property. So this hurts me, but what are your thoughts as somebody who, you know, you don't have the personal connection that I do. Yeah. I mean, the Tropicana definitely needs some uh, upgrading and some new uniqueness brought to it. I do love the, the domed ceiling, you know, that, that area is really beautiful, really cool. So I hope they keep that. You know, but I'm excited to see what they can do with it. it it's still weird that Bally's, that doesn't own Bally's, but is also kind of like Bally's, the sports network, now owns a casino, but they're all different kind of Bally's. So <laughs> in true Vegas fashion, they make it as confusing as possible for people to figure out what's going on. But, uh, you know, it, it is a cool older property, definitely needs some updating. So hopefully this brings new life to it. They retheme it. Hopefully they stayed in the, the Miami vibe. Have you heard anything? Have they said like what the plans are with with rehabbing it or anything no so i did the latest research trying to figure out anything and they've been very quiet about it of course there has been that rumor that this could be a site for one of the a's potential stadiums um this was always a long shot and i wouldn't count on that happening but uh, obviously if the money's right it could be valleys could sell it to the a's to become a stadium site but will most likely be a year or more before we hear what they actually are going to do most likely it's going to be redeveloped into Bally's Las Vegas. The Bally's name obviously is coming off horseshoe. So let's let's back up a little bit. So yeah, you're right. It's all so confusing. I feel like the Bally's Corporation's been under different names and different entities for a long time, um, but that used to all be part of the sort of Caesars um, conglomerate way back in the day. Which Caesars isn't even Caesars anymore. You know, they're El Dorado Gaming. So let's not get started on that. But what's happened is Caesars they sold their Bally's Atlantic City to Bally's Corporation. Um, That company has been buying a lot of casinos over the last few years, and uh, they're basically relaunching the name. Some part of that deal, Caesars gave up the right to use Bally's, and that's why you're seeing them transition the Bally's in Las Vegas to Horseshoe, which will clear the way for Bally's uh, Las Vegas eventually. Their CEO did say in an earnings call a little while back that they do plan to redevelop the property, make it bigger, make it more competitive. It's kind of small, only 1,500 rooms, a 60,000 square foot casino, definitely room for expansion. They have a huge parking lot. So it'll be interesting to see, is this going to be a teardown? Are they going to kind of gut the buildings and redevelop, add on to it? I agree with you that casino is very historic. Uh, That pit definitely needs to stay with the stained glass. That's like one of the coolest things in all of Las Vegas. But uh, 
Yeah, we still don't know anything. It's going to remain a double tree for at least a year. So you can use those Hilton points there. Yeah, mostly just, uh, I think this is the end of an era. Tropicana, as we know it, is going away. Do you think they're going to mess with your favorite pool? <laughs> well, they could heat it. That wouldn't be bad because it is freezing cold in there. Yeah, it's definitely a cool pool. It doesn't have everything it used to have. It used to have these waterfalls, but it definitely has the indoor-outdoor part. It's a throwback to when Tropicana was known as the island of Las Vegas, uh, a time that uh, was very hopeful. And uh, I got to go stay over there before any big changes come. But it sounds like Bally's is on the slow sort of progression, kind of similar to what we'll see with Mirage and Hard Rock, where it takes many years, although this will be a more extensive uh, renovation than what you'll see at Mirage. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of work ahead of them. I put it on par with like the Rio uh, w- when they're going to rehabbing that like similar type of work that they're going to have to do. They're br- bringing in all those different brands, hotels. I'm guessing they're redoing all the rooms. I mean, it, these are older, so they're smaller. Do they mess with walls? That That's like a whole nother level of stuff. I, I don't think they'll do that, but maybe when they add in new towers and stuff, that's when they'll, you know, put luxury into it and everything. But be interesting to see where they go with it what they do hopefully they keep the same vibe because i do i like you know the miami vibe they they got it right there unlike virgin with the their weird desert <laughs> vibe. all right so let, speaking of like redevelopments uh, las vegas has a the whole history of imploding buildings and uh, eight news now kind of put together their archive footage from all of the different implosions and i feel like this is relevant because i want to talk in a minute about fiesta henderson and it's getting very close. I don't know if they're going to implode the tower, but I'll show you what it looks like as of now in just a second. But here were the implosions. The first one that started all was Dunes in 1993. That was replaced uh, by Bellagio, obviously. Uh, Landmark in 95. Sands in 96. That became Venetian Palazzo. Uh, Hacienda in 96. That became Mandalay Bay. Aladdin in 98. That became Planet Hollywood, or it became the new Aladdin, then Planet Hollywood. Uh, El Rancho in 2000, uh, which is, I believe, largely where Fountain Blue is today. Uh, Desert in 2004 became Wynn. Then you had Bourbon Street in 2006. Boardwalk 2006, that became City Center. Castaways in 2006, which is off the strip. Stardust, then New Frontier. Then, of course, Riviera. So it's good to come and go back. I'll, we'll put a link there. You can watch all those different implosions and watch as it happened. There was such a feeling at the time among people that it was so wrong to tear down these buildings. But when you look at a lot of them, you just sort of look at the scale and size of them compared to today's buildings. Like, it makes perfect sense that they would tear down the dunes and build Bellagio. And maybe that's an argument for why they should tear down uh, Tropicana. Yeah, I wish, you know, you you hear these and a lot of them were before my time. You know, I know you went to Vegas when you were younger, but I didn't get to see a lot of them. I would love, like, Star, Stardust is such an iconic sign for Vegas. Such an iconic name. I, I can't believe somebody hasn't tried to revive that brand or bring it back. I don't even know if they legally can or what the details are there. But how cool would it be for somebody to be like, hey, we're building a new Stardust? How amazing would that be? Yeah. And, you know, with like TV shows all getting remade, uh, who knows? I think Boyd Gaming owns the Stardust name. Um, so we may, uh, you know, see that. But yeah, I feel like we're so into retro stuff now and redeveloping old brands and stuff, stuff like that. I wouldn't be surprised to see it happen. And, you know, we're going to see that with if Bally's moves, too. They can sort of reimagine what Bally's is. Although, like you kind of made the point earlier, I don't know how strong the Bally's brand uh, is. but uh, Well, we're bringing the horseshoe back, so we're kind of <laughs> working that way. There you go. Exactly. It's all, it's all one big circle. Now, I did head out to Fiesta Henderson and just drove by there the other day. Um, got given an update. We drove by on the freeway, got out, tried to take video as much as I could, uh, the sign is now mostly gone, so the Fiesta Henderson part of the sign at the top, completely gone. Um, and what they've done is, if you know the building from over the years, there's the front part of the building, which faces the major street. That was the original part of the casino. Then you have the hotel tower. Then behind that was the addition where the uh, movie theaters were on the back of the property. And they basically are tearing out those uh, casino buildings, uh, the one where the movie theaters were, the one on the front. They're probably about 80% gone now. And then in the hotel tower, they're going floor by floor. They probably only have a couple floors left. So I do wonder if they're going to implode that um, just because uh, it's a bit taller. I think it's about 10 stories. You see in the video of it right now. So uh, it's coming along. Uh, We showed the Texas video. I thought I would show this because I was driving by there. Uh, It's always interesting to see a building that big get torn down. Uh, But I think that's just another reminder. Vegas is going to do this. We're going to keep churning through buildings, churning through culture, 
nothing is safe. Have you ever gone to uh, an implosion live like and watched it? No, I'm like ashamed to say it because it's been something I've, you know, long said I want to do. And I almost did it with the Riviera. I stayed there the last night it was open, but I didn't get to the implosion. So maybe maybe this one if it happens. Yeah, I think that'd be something unique to see. You know, you know a lot of cities don't have the ability to do that because everything's so tight and close together. So I think this is kind of a unique aspect of Vegas that they can do this and they do it so often that everybody if you if you're like into that stuff and I mean it's so crazy to see I I feel like it'd be something worth you know carving out of your day for yeah for sure they usually up in the middle of the night and I think that's the reason I probably haven't gone because it's like at 2 a.m or something like you're young again (laughs) pretend like I'm young again all right so this is a new format for us we're going to do shorter shows two shows a week so uh, instead of the 20 plus minute shows, we'll do, do in 10 to 12, 13 minute shows twice a week. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel, smash the uh, the bell, the notification bell, so you get notified whenever we upload a new video, because we'll be doing about the same amount of coverage, just splitting it up a little bit. And we have some other videos coming as well. So Mark, uh, let's close with this. Franco Dragon passed away this last week, and he is infamous, I think, in the world of Las Vegas shows. Kind of got his start with Cirque, um, bringing Mystere to Treasure Island in 1993, then bringing O to Bellagio a few years later. He was behind Celine Dion's A New Day residency, that very first residency that really uh, put uh, Celine's career back on the map in Las Vegas in the Coliseum. Um, Other famous shows like The House of Dancing Water at Macau's uh, City of Dreams, which is where the Grand Hyatt is. I've stayed there. I have not seen the show, but I've heard it's amazing. Of course, I know you really love The Rev. Uh, was his other show uh, that ran uh, all the way through 2020. So sad they closed that theater. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the new show is supposedly good. It's opening Don't up in a few weeks. his best show ever. Yeah, so the, his, his best show was his last one. Um, and the, his last show is the one that just opened this past year, Amistika, uh, Chris Angel's uh, yes. show. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, like, I, I think it's iconic. You know, all the Cirque shows and stuff are so unique to vegas even though there's copycats and they go all over but there's such a cool experience and you know besides ka which it is what it is but i don't mean to trigger you again um (laughs) but no like all those shows (laughs) i need more ka b-roll for every time you mention it just to trigger me (laughs) um those shows are so cool and you know i didn't know that he was involved in larev too which you know is one of my favorite shows that that's been in vegas so such a unique thing and cast and they do so such cool things that you didn't even think were possible and you know that kind of opened it up now it's on america's got talent and all stuff like that but this was well before you know it was on tv and people could see it other places so you know i i can't give him enough respect for what what he pulled off and what he did and what he means for shows in vegas really yeah and he was really trying to relaunch uh, his company in vegas to bring like a new generation of shows i know they're working on some projects they had just uh, launched a new office here. And of course, like we said, the, the Chris Angel show was his first new project coming back. And there were others in the work. So hopefully we'll be seeing his legendary work, you know, mixing the acrobatics and the water and just all the crazy stuff. Um, so many different shows and so many different iconic things from traditional Cirque to things like La Rev to even, you know, Celine Dion's residency. So uh, he had a huge impact. It was a sudden, uh, you know, death. I think he had a heart attack. So uh Thoughts and prayers to his family, and uh, certainly want to give him the respect as a uh, Vegas pioneer and everything he's done in the last 30 years in Vegas entertainment. And not only that, around the world, because there's Dragon shows going everywhere. So uh, rest in peace to Mr. Dragon. And uh, man, doesn't it feel like 2022 has been horrible for celebrity deaths? It just feels like maybe that's every year, but this just seems way more than normal, I feel like. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been rough, um, and this is a big one for the Vegas entertainment community. So, uh, sending everyone our thoughts and prayers, and uh, we'll be back in a few days on Friday with a new episode with more Vegas news. I know we're going to talk about how Resorts World is going full 360 on all of their holidays this year. Maybe we'll talk about the cannabis lounges and how they're working to approve those and some more stuff. So, don't forget to come back later this week. Leave a comment. Let's discuss everything we talked about here. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bells so you see all of our videos when we release them. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you in a couple days.